Yo, yo, welcome to the No Limit Podcast, also known as the Life of a Don Cast, because tonight we are here with the Don of South Philadelphia, Mr. Carmine Yusko. How you doing? I'm doing well, pal. How about you guys? Well, I'm doing great. Good to have you on the show. I'm doing even better that we're having you on the show. My my favorite thing about podcasts is having interesting, unique guests, and you definitely are. Dude, No Limit keeps coming. Keeps coming with the guests. Week after week, we're coming with some heat, dude. Is this like five in a row? Four in a yeah. row? Guest run. Guest run. And right now Guess we're saying we're one of the best. Thank Hell yeah, for sure. So Danny put it perfectly earlier, so I want to let you say, let you ask him the first question. Oh, you want to get right into it? Get right into it. I forget my question. It was, how does somebody born in 1997? Your wording was so good. Yeah, I know. That's, that's the problem <laughs> with me. Like, I say something in the moment, and then it's, it's gone. So I said, how does somebody in 1997, like get into like big band like get not only get in the big band like i'm i'm in the old music like as a fan right mm-hmm. but i don't perform it it's not like it's not a lifestyle of my you know what i mean like, you kind of like live that lifestyle kind of like that classy lifestyle you 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 uh i don't know you just like you like reek of class for something you know what i mean like <laughs> that's that a good is. way to like, put it it really is but like that comes from like that old soul mentality of like somebody i think is classy i think is somebody old but like you have that somehow like how does somebody born in 1997 grasp that and get that uh to be quite honest with you guys um it started uh, as a, at a young age you know my grandfather i was always around my grandparents they were always a big influence and um, i always remembered sundays with sinatras and my grandfather was always either playing a, a big band record or a doo-wop record they they loved that type of music and um from then on i, I never really knew i was a singer i never really knew i was an actor performer but everybody would always say how much of a character i could be sometimes mm-hmm. And uh, I went to St. Monica's grade school. And uh, my Were your mother, grandparents from South Philly? Yeah, my whole family is from South Philly. But they're born and raised South Philly? Yeah, okay. born and raised. Um, except for my mother's side, on the great, great family side. They great, came great. from Italy. Okay. So um, after I graduated grade school, I went to uh, high school at uh, String Theory Performing Arts High School. Mm-hmm. And they had a theater program. And I was just trying to pick the easiest, you know, elective really? to go into. Yeah. And I ended up falling in love with it, theater and musical theater. And I did my first uh, singing role, stage acting. And uh, I did Beauty and the Beast, and I had a very small part. I think I played a rug. <laughs> 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 and I played um, Monsieur de Lune, which is the owner of the Insane Asylum, but my song Monsieur got Monsieur de Lune. Yeah. And then on uh, my second year, uh, I met a good Did the friend. rug sing? No, the rug just danced around, and I okay. felt like a complete idiot. But gotcha. it was for the the class. Hey, so. everybody's got to start somewhere. Was a dan- I remember I had oh, little tassels. You're gonna so you're gonna remember around. being in that rug for the rest <laughs> yeah, of your the rest life. Of my right? life. When you're, when Thank you're God there's Hollywood no pictures. Walking, uh, uh, what's it? The star on the yeah. street when you're the at that rug. rug. <laughs> you're gonna talk about that rug story. Carmine the rug Yusko. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inevitably, there'll be a role somewhere in your career where you have to refer back to the, to that rug yeah, role. The rug. Definitely. Exactly. For sure. And. um my second year in high school, I met a good friend of mine and still a very good friend of mine. My mentor, his name is Brandon Tomasello. And uh, we met in the hallway. Um, Wait, so you... you, you he worked at the school. He uh, worked there? But he was a professional singer long before that. Okay, I mm. thought it was like another classmate. I was like, how did he become no. your mentor? It's no, like, he's he, like also he had his own studio and everything. Okay, I got and, you. And um, he says, so you know everything about Sinatra. And me being as stubborn as I would, I know everything about Sinatra. Yeah. I didn't at the time. <laughs> and uh, he invited me over to the studio, and uh, I really had a love for it, and he showed me that uh, I could sing, and he showed me to find my own voice. And that year, I did the talent show, and I did the song Come Fly With Me, and it took off from there. I started getting gigs. My first paying gig uh, was at Toll Man Joe's. It was my Toll first ever wow. paying gig. First time I became a professional. At, at was that age? in like the outside? Like I the... was inside, and it was for Mother's what, Day brunch. In the bar though, or like they, they had a like, stage. They, they... they had a stage. When you walked inside to the left, there was that. Stage. Oh, okay. I know exactly what you're talking about. Were they the seats, uh-huh. the tables? And it was a Mother's Day brunch, and my first ever mm-hmm. paying gig for four hundred bucks. That's not bad. For four hours. That's hey, not bad. Hey, hundred an hour. hour Come dude. on now. Yeah. Uh, well, and how the old time, were you then? Worked, oh my god, second year in high school. Young kid. Yeah. I don't remember. I honestly don't remember how And you've I was. done... And how did you do? Were you nervous? Like, I mean, looking back now, obviously my voice has progressed. And as yeah, a singer, yeah. your voice always progressed. So I guess if I was there videos for them now, I'd be like, eh, Jesus. Right. But at, at, the, the time, at, at the time, do you remember like thinking like, wow, I just killed it? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Of course. And of course, I have shows that I'm like, yeah, I was a little off tonight, but nobody probably noticed. See, but like, that's what I mean. Like, how does somebody, what, freshman, sophomore in high school, like doing a, like a 
singing a Frank Sinatra gig at Tall Man Joe's. Well, I don't consider it Sinatra music. I consider it big yeah, band music. Sp- exactly. Uh, we talked about that on associ- Chindan. Exactly. Everybody associates big band music with Sinatra. I guess because the, the He's the most head. popular, yeah. yeah. Um, but I'm not a Frank Sinatra singer. I'm a, a big band singer. Right. Uh, I would go as far to just say I'm a vocalist. I'll, I'll sing anything if I could. If I think that I'm going to sound right doing it. We so, did. We uh, got a new. We got a new a few different songs when when we were on Chen Dan podcast. We went into something about the Dupree's. Exactly. Uh, so exactly. yeah, definitely so a vocalist. No limit. Music is relevant to the times of which we anybody gotta lives. get a Carmine feature on a no <laughs> song with Carmine rapping. Yeah. Oh, and then, yeah. and then not singing. even rapping, just Look, a, just no, a he, section of singing. Or he could sing a hook. He could sing you a hook on a song. Yeah. Yeah, of he course. He can sing you a hook, but he, I feel like he should have a rap for it. I've yeah. had, I've uh, had a rap for it. Now before. I yeah. won't put you on the spot now because I know as as somewhat of a vocalist myself that you, your vocals need to be warmed up when you want to bust out a few bars. You know, so later funny. in the show, it's funny you say we that. will get a few bars from you if it's, you if you got that in. Yeah, well, so I just got done a show uh, three in a row actually, so it's a little little rough on the chords, but I'll, I'll get I'll, something out there. For I you. think. Uh, in the style of our show, it doesn't have to be your best work. I think our fans <laughs> are impressed just, just about anything yeah. at this point. But um, it's That's what funny you say warm up. There's been times I, I haven't warmed up, and by the third song, I'm warmed up. So the first three songs are my warm up, and then, then I'm good to go. But, have uh, you ever gone out and, like, bombed? Uh, in my opinion, I mean, I've definitely had shows where I felt that I could have done millions of times better you know there's just times where you overwork yourself and of course you don't take care of your voice sometimes Mm -hmm. and you're uh you're not going to perform as good as you want to and you think that the audience is like damn this kid must suck and they all come up the afterwards they'll come backstage and be like you were amazing and it's like really yeah Mm -hmm. okay thank you thank you very much so one um, of my when you're I, your harshest critic when I was yeah, more heavy into uh, rap music when I was in high school myself we had a show out in Aston Pennsylvania and that was my first taste of like brutal honesty from people oh yeah booed out of the fucking building never got booed there were still really? kids afterward that thought that it was so cool just that I was so young up there performing mm-hmm. so so I understand what you're saying I can't there. say I'm sorry that happened to you by the way but I can't say I've ever gotten hey, you've booed you've ever been booed yeah but my harshest critic is obviously my son Brandon Thomasello he'll uh if I had a if I had a clam, he, he was gonna let you know because yeah. he said if you if you want to be the best, be the best. Don't be one of these amateurs, professional amateurs. He likes to call them. That yeah. just goes out there and does it for two hundred bucks and then calls it a day. If you want to be in this business, do it the right way. And that's where I think that your key is. The question you're asking is, you know, how have you gone so far into this show mm-hmm. business world? And I think that that guy Brandon Tomasello, I can tell how important he is to you. And actually, when we were on the Chin Don podcast. Another reason I could tell how important he is, you called him in the middle of the show yeah. to ask him advice <laughs> yes. on how you should uh, yeah. say something next on yeah. the show. So I know that that guy and his opinion is definitely oh, important very, to you. Very much so. And, uh, you know, I have most of my career to, to owe to him. Mm-hmm. You know, it's uh, without him, I wouldn't have found my own voice. I probably would have gotten stuck as an impersonator somewhere. And he helped me find my own voice and uh, gave me a retrospect and uh, a very deep respect for the, the music and the um, the. the time it takes to actually make something like this happen because i'll tell you one thing there's nothing like working with live musicians behind you especially when you get to work with the best of the best you know Mm -hmm. uh, guys that he's introduced me to over the years that i've had the privilege of working with multiple times on occasion um the it's just this style of music people take it for granted because they think that you could just do it with a track and call it a day and that's not how it should be done Mm -hmm. it should be done with respect and class for the people that did it before us and it's uh there it goes again class got to keep it alive it's it's hard. classy it really is like it's just like it like i don't know but it's, it's it's not trashy you no, know what i mean no, like it's super it's, it's talent you, yeah. you need it I, takes, and, and, and it's very it's raw a team. talent right it's like a team. you get out there and there's it's it's um it's instruments and your vocals there's it there's, there's no yeah. smoke and mirrors maybe it's, a little it's bit of reverb on your mic right about and, it. It, but really you're out there just alone you, you know don't get no water tune and yeah, you talked right. about before how important each instrument is in this it big, is. big band um, production. You know, you you know, if you have the ear for it, if you love this music the the way that I do, you could tell when something's missing, and you can tell when um, you know. I call uh, he calls me, and I call myself a French horn snob, because I will take a pay cut just to have French horns in the band or to have <laughs> strings in the yeah. band. Yeah, we could do it for this much, but if we do it for this much, we could have two French horns. Oh, yeah, let's do the French horns. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. So it's uh, it's definitely, um, it's more of an experience. It's in a rush, too. It's it's such a rush to when you have 10, 24, 42 guys behind you 
blowing their asses off. Yeah. And you got a nice crowd in front. You could tell they're just enjoying it. Yeah. That's cool. That, that that's really the way cool. to do it. And I think that that style of music, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off that, but I think that that style of music also, you know, it catches people, people by surprise when they hear it like in the wild like that, when they didn't expect to see that great yeah. of a performance in that style of music mm-hmm. right then and there. It's like enjoyable for everybody. Exactly. Everybody can get into it. You know what exactly. I mean? Exactly. Because it's good enough, right? A great live performance, no matter the no genre, matter what. you can right, get but into. But like something like as niche as like what big band music has become in today's age, like it's like everyone's like, wow, it's cool as hell. And everybody's trying to do it today. Right, yeah. Everybody's trying to do it. And uh, Think about what our rap songs have added horns over the years and stuff yeah, like that. Right? Everybody's trying to do it. It's just, it's sad to see people kind of depreciating the value of the the genre Mm -hmm. when you get these guys that um you know i of course i'm guilty i'll work with a track sometimes as well do i enjoy it no but you'll get these guys oh why do i need a band when i could go in there with a track and that's well you're killing the business you're the reason why it's so expensive one to have a live band and why it's so hard to put on an actual show with this music and not just be sitting there doing a dinner service because nobody gives a fuck what you're doing. And those are the service. guys, like you yeah. said, who kind of become a parody act, do it for two hundred bucks, put a track on, get yeah. out the door. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Sinatra. No, 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 no. If you're gonna do it, do it the right way. That's the only thing. That's the only way to say it. If you're gonna do it, do it the right way. Yeah. And unfortunately, with some people, you'll never get it through their heads, and they're the reasons that this business is the way it is right now, currently. But hopefully, one day soon, or maybe later down the road, there's a change. And uh, we could bring back the rejuvenation of what it used to be. Yeah. So obviously, the singing and big band music is was your very first step into anything show business related. Yes. But now you're actually working more in the cinema world, more more on camera. I so wouldn't let's say bring more. it. I let, wouldn't say more about um, just as much. Uh, I'm a singer first before anything. Okay. Uh, I love acting. I would love to do both equally. But um, with the cinema world, yeah, I'm doing a lot of work in the cinema world. But, you know, with, with singing and uh, performing, I'm working every week, three, four times mm-hmm. a week. You know, when you do a movie, you do a movie for a month, month and a half, and then you yeah. take a fucking a <laughs> month break. I just so right. beat, you so know. singing's your day job. Yeah, basically. Right. I'm a professional singer. Yeah. Right. And where was that first moment? Does, does cinema and being in front of the camera go back as far as singing does for you? I or did it start more recently? I never acted in a movie a day in my life. Not once. Um, my first experience, I would say, acting, uh, once again, goes back to stage. I played uh, Rooster in Annie. And uh, that was, like, I think it was the role that was made for me. And I played, <laughs> it was. It was such a sleazy a role it was it was made for me and uh, i love that role and then i played um did a little show called the P- laramie project and i played the limo driver which was played by steve buscemi in the film and i played the detective and uh, i got a lot of praise for that one as well and then i played kanicki in greece and then i played rapunzel's prince in into the woods and then i did a talk show and then that was that and then that was the end of high school. And then after that... Now, Kanicki in Greece for you had to be easy. You just I show up, slick your hair me. back to yourself. Me. Yeah. I was playing me. You know, with a little bit more, you know... Hollywood should to reboot it. Greece with Carmine <laughs> as a star. A uh-huh. hickey from Kanicki is like a calling card. <laughs> That's my favorite line. But, um, yeah, that was the end of high school. And then after that, my first experience acting was uh, with Bisco, with Alex. Yeah. That was the first time. Other I host of Chin Don Podcast. Film yeah. Noir? Yeah, you the second did? host. Uh, no, that wasn't the first one. We did a small short called uh, Street of Dreams, and I had no speaking in that. It was a silent film. But um, I always, I was always told that I, I should be an actor in acting. And my first serious role, um, I got a contacted from a man named Frank Tartagula and Tim Dowling. And this was months before we even started filming. I want to even say a year before it started filming. I got an email with a script that said not for nothing. And I said, what the hell is this? Saying nothing, and I threw it away. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, this, this can't be serious. And then a couple months... You didn't months, read it? No, I didn't even read it. Wow. Didn't, didn't open it. the attachment. I thought it was <laughs> I thought it was a sick joke. I, yeah, really yeah. I thought somebody was pulling my leg. You want me to, to one of the second lead? You want me to try out for the second lead? Are you nuts? I never acted in my life. What is this? I thought this someone was pulling a sick joke on me. And then, it had to be a couple months later. Now, did you receive that email before or after you blew up on TikTok I received a little the, bit? This is way before I blew up okay. on right, This is yeah, this is before I even knew what TikTok was. I yeah, was computer yeah. illiterate. Yeah. Uh, my friend Joe DeStefano 
uh, he calls me. He says, listen, uh, they really want you to try out for this film. I'm like, what film? He's like, they sent you an email attachment some time back. I'm like, not for nothing? He's like, yeah. I went, I thought that was a joke. So I went and I tried out for the part. Oh, well, not for nothing. We did send you the script. <laughs> yeah. And then the, I went out for the second, the second audition, the third audition, and then finally they gave me the role of Frankie, which is the second brother in the film. What did they make you do for your audition? Uh, read really? from the script, do a little bit of you know, the stage direction, and uh, I made the character was completely different how they wrote it to what I brought to the table. But they loved that I made the character my own, and um, next thing I knew, I was the second lead in a movie that That's I awesome. had never even thought that I was going to do before. And and, uh, and this movie's called Not For Nothing? It's called Not For Nothing, and it's going to be released fairly soon. And it filmed uh, pretty close to here, right? Right down the street was one of the filming locations. Yeah, yeah one Pablo of the, Wolf. Yeah. yeah. Well, in the film, it's called Mario's Bar. But, yeah. Uh, it's called Mario's? Mario's Bar in the film, yes. So can you tell us a little bit about, about the plot of the film? Is that, yeah, so is that something you could say on here? Not For Nothing starts, uh, there's two brothers, Mikey and Frankie. I play the role of Frankie. And a very good actor, Michael Bash, plays the role of Mikey. Very, very good seasoned actor. I um, really suggest you look him up. He's been in Shameless and things like that. And before I get into the plot, I had the privilege of working with very well-seasoned actors such as um, Michael McFadden, uh, you know, Law & Order, Broadrunners with um, Ice, Ice-T. Yeah, uh, very good actor. Um, what's the other guy's name? Butchie. His name was Butchie in the movie. Michael Gambino. Oh, he's a he's a great actor. He was on Shameless as well. Terrific actors. Uh, Lauren Levera. I'm sorry if I butchered your name, Lauren. Uh, she's in the Terrifier too. Shout out. She's in Terrifier too, and uh, multiple other films. So just so many great actors. I had the Al Sapienza from The Sopranos. Michael, uh, not Michael, Vic DiBedetto. So many great seasoned actors that I had the privilege of working with, and it follows um, us as a group. Uh, me and my brother, of course, but uh, all of us, this ragtag group of people at Mario Bar. Very South Philly guys, you know, our families are mob affiliated. And uh, it follows us on this path, you know, through drug addiction and my brother, he's a thief and things like that. And uh, it's a slow downhill slope. And then, you know, without spoiling too much, there's a plot, something that happens and uh, everything just loses sends its mind. the story on its way. And it, it sets the story on its way and it kind of causes this this old school mob war that starts to happen and it's basically us versus them. And um, it tells a very good story about the opioid epidemic that's going on and uh, it sends a very clear message of what if, you know, you know, the best line and one of the best lines in cinema history is there's nothing worse in life than wasted talent. And I think that this film touches on that as well because uh, my character wants to go on to be a singer and things like that. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's very touches on multiple aspects of life that it's very intriguing. It sounds and, like kind of like part of the role is like true to you too. Like exactly being a singer, so like you have the kind of like emotional stake in it. Frankie is definitely um, was definitely a role that I, I delved deep into. Um, he's he's a hothead, but he's uh, I'm going to go as far to say he's a little bit of a junkie too, mm. and tries to get his life together. And he just he always hits that stream of bad luck. Mm. And uh, his brother always tries to pull him out of it, and I'm that hard-headed character. Yeah. And uh, you just you got to watch the film for the rest. Let me yeah. put it that way. No, I'm and, I'm 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 hard to say it. And sure. you did do an interview for the film, speaking about the Frankie character. I did. I did. Um, we could show that right now. Of course. We could pop that in there. In South Philly, you have two types of people. You have your your strong, you know, go out there, get it. I'm gonna show you who I am type of people. And you have your people that are basically your neighborhood bar flies that you know for a fact are not going to do anything in life. And Frankie, which is a, to me at least was a mixture of both. And Frankie is that perfect concoction of a cocktail of disaster and also that little bit of a soft side to him because Frankie has something to prove. And that's another thing in South Philly. Everybody has something to prove to somebody. I had the blocker. She would oh, just you. say to me, Mike. All right. Fucking hit okay. me, Mike. Get ahead. Right. Right. You wanna All fucking right. go, Mike? Right. I'm sorry, Frank. I feel like this role basically brought out a side of me that is almost an insecure side. You know, because I'm that you know, the guy you walk into the room, you want to make sure your presence is known. But being able to play Frankie, I got to show the insecurities and the the side of well, maybe somebody's not so perfect on the inside if they just had a little bit of guidance. Um. 
moving on from that film specifically, um, everybody be on the lookout for that. Somewhere that you know well and good. Let's just say that. <laughs> It'll be um, out there. And you'll be seeing a little more Carmine on there too. For sure. <laughs> I think. I, maybe, maybe. Maybe. So, Alex Biscardi. Uh, seen him on this podcast. Have a good seen time. him on Chindam podcast. If he hates his film freeloader, don't forget. <laughs> he can't stand them. So, very good friend of yours. Yes. You also have done some films with him. Yeah, so I just got done uh, recently, wrapped up a film with him that he did for uh, school in New York Film Academy. And he, he's going to be submitting that to a lot of film festivals, which I have no doubt in my mind that it'll do excellent. And I had the privilege of working with the great and talented Rosario Amico, who I had on my show, Chindan Podcast, and uh, multiple other actors that were just terrific to work with. But um, that show is called, uh, shit, I forgot the name of the movie. <laughs> <laughs> the new one you guys are recording. I forgot that, whole time, that whole time we were talking about, were you trying to think about it? <laughs> Street of Dreams. Uh, Street of Dreams, called okay. Street of so Dreams. That's what, and that's what Bisco's working on? Yes, this okay. is the one that's... Uh, the movie's called Street of Dreams. Uh, it's bad when you forget the name of your own movie, right? Well, that's because he needs to just finish <laughs> just up the editing it. and it's We've ready been, to go. It's yeah, been it's, done. It's ready to go. Uh, <laughs> I play the role. Come on, Bisco. We want to see it. We want to see it. I want to see it. We got the trailer. It's out there, right? <laughs> yeah, trailer's, the trailer's out there to out there. watch. Street of Dreams trailer featuring Carmine. Yeah, it's a uh, black and white neo noir film. Uh, very, uh, I don't even know how to put it. It's, it's short, but it feels like you're watching an entire film. And uh, I play the character of Angelo, who is uh, doesn't care about anybody but himself. And uh, towards the end of the movie, he comes to a realization, maybe I shouldn't be so selfish anymore, you know. But at that point, it's too late, mm -hmm. and I can't really give up anything else. But the, the theme of that movie is really, the, the plot is, um, I get a call to go to this party out in God knows where. Uh, Hick town, as I would say. And uh, I drag my friend. I drag my friend out there, and he's a, he's a sax player. He doesn't really want to go. He has a show the next day, but I drag him out there anyway. And nobody there knows this. And I hyped it up to be something it wasn't. And some beef happens, and um, <clears throat> that's where the climax is. And uh, some very um, turn of unfortunate events happen afterwards, and then that is the movie. So you're gonna have to watch to find out what those events are. Yeah. But it's very... A lot of Carmine coming up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so it sounds like you've had a couple of roles, and a few of them fit kind of in line with who you are uh, in your everyday life. Yeah, but they're not exactly typecasted, because I, I hate a typecast. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like to be challenged. My good friend Brandon Brooks, who was a producer on Not For Nothing... Uh, for those, if you don't know already, I believe I told you I'm a big horror movie fan. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, you pointed out that they live stuff. Huge horror yeah. movie. Yeah, they live great horror movie. And Brandon Brooks, a producer on the um, Not For Nothing film, is uh, also an actor and director. And he does a lot of horror stuff. And we keep in contact very frequently. Send me a song. If we had the cup of milk here, I would be getting fucked up right now. <laughs> yeah. I'd be calling him. Sending, uh, he's, we talked to each other frequently, and he just talked to me about maybe getting me on one of his horror movies. He has a role wow, that'd be cool. that he wants me to read for. So that you know, that's something completely different that I would love Dude, to do. Dude, if they ever need anybody to just get like killed like quickly, and you need a role, I'll play it. I'll put, <laughs> yeah, I'll put, put the a word, word in. And I will, it. and I will go so hard in this role. I'm not even kidding. I will, I'll put I will the give word. It, I will give it my all. Hey, hopefully I get. If it's no. a role with a killer, hopefully I get the killer. If, if they, they ever not, need no, a star they, no. to recite a hundred lines <laughs> you, of dialogue, no, no, you got, you got, you got my number now. If they're ever like, yo, we need somebody to get fucking their head chopped off for two seconds, just call me. I'll be there. I'll be there immediately. Yeah, be there instantly. And uh, me and Bisco are working on another film coming up. We just got the script. Uh, I'm playing a detective in uh, 1940s noir. Yeah. Play, uh, it was a role that was meant wow, to go to really? Bogart, but uh, the movie never ended up being made. So this is going to be our, our pitch to see if we can get funding for the entire movie. Mm. It's nice. So, so a 1940s movie, how do you go about like making everything And look that's like the whole well, process it's, it's of funny. it. You've got to set design. you got to do all well, that, right? Well, it's funny because he asked me... Uh, to be in charge of wardrobe as well, which I jumped right on it. I don't yeah. care. He said, I know you're the main lead, but could you do me a favor and take care of wardrobe? I said, 1940s and I'm a private investigator? <laughs> Fuck yes, I will be the... Trench coats. I coats. will 100% <laughs> be the wardrobe designer for Trench that. Coats I said, I might get a little pricey to look for the thing. He said, I don't care. I just trust you to do it. I said, no. I'll tell you what, though. The dialogue That's is funny. a pain in the ass. Mm. It is very the 1940s. Dialogue? And you talk about, you're talking about writing it or reciting it? 
reciting it. You know, it, it's very 1940s, very snappy dialogue. Mm. It's snappy. One of the, one of the good lines way to describe is, it. Yep. Uh, yeah. You know, kid, I ought to bop you. Why don't you get in there and sit down before you get frisky or something like that? I'm like, what the hell? And the other, what's one of the other ones? Maybe the child's in there with the ice man making out with the maid. I'm like, what the hell am I saying? You know? Yeah, I feel like that would trip me out. Like, what am I saying? What am I hearing back? It's like the only thing to go you know, off kid, of you're is gonna a get book. A box soon. <laughs> yeah, the only thing to go off of is a book. You know, there's no film to go back and see how it was said. So you're kind of leaving it up to interpretation. Damn. So maybe your wife can get a job and start to support you. How much are you into him for? Twelve grand? <laughs> what the hell? I, I love just it. All you can just keep them popping. I know. Uh, what was one of the other ones? A funny one. Uh, he goes. So he's talking about his mother. He goes, "What do you think of her? Your mother? No, the maid. Oh, the maid. Well, you know, she's cute in an old-fashioned world kind of way. No, not her. My mother." <laughs> <laughs> Yo. Why did people stop talking like that? Like, what happened? <laughs> I actually asked the same thing. What happened? As soon as you started reciting some of the lines, I have seen films and just pieces of just work from that era before where a lot I more asked dialogue. the same question. That dialogue was good. That th that interaction between people harder. at the time was very quick, quick, quick. A lot of information. Snap. And, dude, what's, yeah. the, what's the best type of TV shows? It's The Sopranos where it's all quick dialogue and yep. shit like that, right? It's, you know, it's, Did you ever watch a TV show called The West Wing? No, but I know what it is. It's very good TV show. It's, it's uh, about the president of the United mm -hmm. States, it, but this is in the 90s. Very good TV show. That was too. on for like years. Dial yes, nine seasons. I believe. Yeah. Uh, dialogue right straight back and forth with each other. You know, but uh, yeah, definitely. Well, I, I just feel like people talk to what, like. Completely different. Yeah. Like why, how, how's that stop? One like, of the best lines race. from Casablanca and all the gin joints and all the towns and all the world, she had to walk in the mind. Yeah. You know, it's. Poetic. Very, very. Yeah. That's a beautiful line. So where I was getting at with your characters, though, is what type of actor would you describe yourself as in preparing for these roles? Are you a method actor? Do you live these characters? Or are you able to just pop in and out of the characters? I would say a little bit of both. You know, um, For Frankie, I definitely method acted. In some ways, maybe that I shouldn't have. But for Frankie, I definitely method acted. Um, but other than that, I'm able to kind of just pop right in and, in and out. Um, I'm going to wait until I get to Hollywood to go into more method acting style because uh, Daniel Day-Lewis is one of the actors that I look up to. Yeah. You know, if I had to pick top three off the top of my head, I'm going with Daniel Day-Lewis, Willem Dafoe, and, uh, of course, Mr. Al Pacino. We just talked about Willem Dafoe in depth with Bisco on our episode with him when we talked yeah. about Norman's films. on sabbatical, honey. Yeah. I love that line. Yeah. Willem anybody... Dafoe is eccentric. He's like a weird dude. Like, you know like Willem Dafoe? Have <laughs> you, know you know seen I mean? The Lighthouse with Willem Dafoe and Robert Pattinson? I no, I never saw that, but I wanted to. Dude, that's a freaky movie. It. You like it probably because of the... You like he, horror. It's not really horror, but... It's a thriller, but he has a, about a five and a half, six minute dialogue, and he doesn't trip up the entire time. Oh, wow. Well, I'm about to watch it tonight. Yeah. Dude, it's so wow. good. Right. So yeah. good. Yeah, Very and good. it's a slow burn, but it just... It, if you watch it, it, it almost reminds me of watching somebody lose their sanity. Mm. Right. Yeah, yeah, That's yeah. what it's meant to be because yeah. they're out there on the rock. Yeah. Uh -huh. Those two together. You're slowly losing, losing your sanity yep. the entire and time. And the movie slow burns, just like you said, right with that sanity And go loss. figure, you have Willem Dafoe who plays one of my favorite Marvel villains of all time. And then you have Robert Pattinson who's playing one of my favorite DC heroes of all time. Dude, which I think he's going to do great. I think that movie's going to be really. I think he's going to do well. I think that whole movie. I think the whole cast is going to do well. Paul Dano or Paul Dano, whatever. I love Colin Farrell as Colin the Penguin. The Penguin. Yeah, I, I think that, that that movie's just going to be. Uh, isn't uh, what's the name? Isn't Andy Serkis Alfred? I don't know. I think he's honestly. Gordon. Uh, Andy Serkis Alfred. The, the African American gentleman is uh, Gordon. Uh. I forget who he is. I know who you're talking about, yeah. though. Yeah, I think that that movie is going to be really, yeah. really good. Yeah. I'm like, that comes out soon. March 4th. Yeah, Scream comes out this week. You think oh, that's wow. going to be good? Think Scream's going to be good? I don't know. Think it's going to be a parody of the old one. Wes Craven, for any horror fan, if you're a horror, I wouldn't even call myself a horror fan. I'm a horror nut. I am a nut job when it comes to horror. I love all of it. I watch all of it. I live it. I breathe it. Dude, I that's love such it. a curveball from your out <laughs> your personality. Nobody yeah, takes the chance I mean? to get to know the real limit. you when you're yeah, in, that's, that's, when you're on camera and on stage all the time. Nobody cares about the real you. They just want to hear what you're doing. But anybody that knows me knows I'm a horror enthusiast. And um, if anybody who's even the slightest bit of fan of horror, Wes Craven, mm -hmm. Nightmare on Elm Street, Last House on the Left, etc., Scream. And yeah. he did up the four. And the fact that, unfortunately, he passed away and he's not here to do the fifth one, I hope they do Mr. Craven some justice. 
That's all I could say. Yeah. And I'm sure they leave will. it at this one. This should yeah. be it. This should be the this end should of be it. done. And well, look what happened when you. My favorite Nightmare on Elm Street is Wes Craven's New Nightmare because Wes Craven only directed one, three, and Wes Craven's New Nightmare. All the rest were all different directors. Uh, my favorites just happened to be one, three, and Wes Craven. But Wes Craven's New Nightmare, they went all the way up to Freddy's death, which was six. And Wes Craven, they, they killed Freddy off. Freddy, Freddy Krueger was dead. And they Freddy. came to Wes and they said, let's do one more. He said, no. He said, you just killed the franchise enough. And this is on a documentary by Never Sleep Again, if you ever get the chance to watch it. It's about five hours long, but yeah. you get to watch it. And five hours long? Yeah, and I watched the entire thing straight through wow. about four or five times. Wow, <laughs> really? Yeah. Um, straight? And, not in a row, but <laughs> I watched them straight through. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, you sat on the couch for five hours and watched Wes Craven. I went through every single Nightmare on Elm Street. And uh, Wes Craven said, all right, if I'm going to bring him back, I'm going to bring him back one more time, and then this is it. And the way he brought him back... Uh, the original character, Heather Lankincat, was the actress. And she played the role of Nancy. Then you had guys that were in the studios. They all came and they played themselves. And they played themselves and now Freddy Krueger is real. He's his actual entity who haunts the people who were in his movies. So nobody so believes he's not it. in a dream state? He's, he's, a dr he's in the dreamscape, but he's... It's real. Oh, okay, okay, okay. okay like, the movie okay. exists in the movie. The Nightmare on Elm Street series exists in the movie, Wes Craven's New Nightmare. Mm. And the people that played these people in the Nightmare on Elm Street series are acting as themselves in this movie. So it's almost like you're watching a documentary. It's like, Freddy's not real. He's a movie. But now Freddy's actually real. Yeah. Hmm. And that's how he did it. And it is fucking fantastic. I've never seen it. I actually always thought... It was some bullshit. Wes Craven's new nightmare. Because I, because I never saw, I never saw the Wes Craven had like tagline. I just thought it was like just in the, like the Freddy Krueger new, new nightmare. nightmare. No. I just thought like it was just some bullshit one, like number eight, like how like Jason went was, to Manhattan. That was the last one, and that had nothing to do with the series. That was his love child, the Freddy yeah. Krueger. Oh wow, that's that was like his. That. Leave me the fuck alone now. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is it. And I feel like with how we just talked about Scream, if he were around to do this one, that's how he would do it. I think they should have left it at four, to be quite honest. I think that that's. I think look, if you look at the trailer, that's probably how they are doing it. Like that, this is going to be the. The last killer's one. in the poster. That's what yeah. it says on the on the poster. It's that's the killer's in the poster. So we'll see how they do it, but mm. uh, it says the killer's in the poster. And on, whose picture on the poster? The everybody. Mask? Ah, okay. Everyone's on there. Okay. But uh, I believe they should leave it here because. I hate when they take a good series and run it to the ground. Mm -hmm. I absolutely hate that. And if I ever do a horror series like that, or if I ever do any series like that, uh, I would refuse if, to come back. As what, do you, uh, what do you think of the newest Halloween? Ooh, yeah, that's a touchy subject here. It is a touchy um, subject. Halloween right. Kills? So yeah, yeah, yeah. any horror fans that are watching, you just keep knocking stuff over Dude. today, don't you? <laughs> you got to move his chair. Yeah, you all right? Big body boy. Maybe we got a ghost in here that's saying shut up. Nah. Maybe he I likes Halloween kills. Yeah. So uh, that's a touchy subject here. Maybe um, it's Michael Myers. Any horror. Maybe it's Freddy Krueger. <laughs> Wake and, up. Any horror fans that are watching this, don't cut my throat. I love Halloween one. I love Halloween two. I love Halloween three season of The Witch without Michael Myers as a standalone <laughs> film. I don't like four. I don't like five. I don't like six. I'll watch them, but I don't exactly like them. I loved the Rob Zombie's remake. Rob Zombie's was good. I absolutely loved this remake. I did like that one. I enjoyed two, but I didn't, it got a little uh, weird. Yeah, I thought, I thought one was really good. I loved Halloween 2018. Halloween Kills tried to do too much. Mm, definitely. That's what we thought about it. We turned it on, and to oh, me, yeah, it, it just together, seemed yeah. like everyone in the whole town was being killed. It, it should have been two separate movies. Uh, that is not Michael Michael Myers. It didn't seem like I, I love the nineteen seventy eight flashbacks or seventy four flashbacks. They did those really well. They did tie I everything together. And that's for, why for like real the super movie, fans like that the first movie. scene where it's the end of the first movie, right? Remember how they redo it in the, yeah, the beginning of the Loomis. movie? They did that. Yeah, they did that. That well, amazing. because with this that film, it's only going off of one, then 18, and then this right. one. And then, of course, Halloween ends, which so, like, hopefully they finally fucking kill him. The, and, the, and that's, and I think it's... <laughs> Once it's, and for it's, all. It's, it's, now It'll that it's January, be. now that it's January, Halloween's over. I'm not worried about spoiling Michael Myers. The fact that he, they, they did not kill him at the end of that movie. 
It was. It's comical. They they, they were entire, signed for a three contract three contract film though. That, That's Hollywood. Then how could you like? He literally just he literally annihilated everybody in the movie. He and did. He came the out. The entire neighborhood shot and beat him to death. And then they stabbed him in the back of the head. And then he got up and not only got away, but he got up and murdered them all. He murdered all of them. Every single one After of them. he got shot like seven times. Hey, big guy. Where's that ashtray? Like, I, I, like, after the start of that movie where they did that real cool flashback, I got so... I got, like, hyped for like, the rest of the movie. I was and very excited It was excited so for it. bad. It was so bad. It was one of the worst movies I've ever watched. It, it was it was definitely just disappointing. It was comical. It was, it was just, definitely it was just stupid. There was nothing to it. It's just like, no matter what, he just gets up and kills you. That's it, why that's Halloween really cool ends. If they did all this with Halloween Kills, what, what are they going to do with Halloween ends? They're going to literally drive a fucking <laughs> Boeing 737 in the wall. And he's just going to get up and just fucking kill the pilot. Like, that's exactly how fucking Halloween ends is going to end. I'm telling you right now. Well, did you see the new Texas Chainsaw Massacre coming out on Netflix? Nah, I didn't see that. This is going to be uh, a direct sequel to the first one, the original. I, I like the original one, and they're, that's like the only be, one. They're taking it back Dude, before. Dude, in the original, there's like a... Did you ever watch the original? There's it like is so there's like updated. A, it, there's like a 15-minute chase scene. It's like the chase goes on for and like... he's like, just going like this, though. Dude, and like they're like running through like the what woods. What about and the then poor the truck driver they oh, left? Oh, my God. She gets in the car at the end, and they drive off, and they save her. But what about the truck driver that's still running down the road? It's, like, it's screw a, him. It is a uh, <laughs> a great ending scene, though, where she gets in the back of the pickup truck, and he's just chasing her with yeah. the thing, and he's just like, no Good chase again, but he's like, I'm not, I'm not stopping. A shitty banger is... The 2003 one? Is the 2003 Bro, one with Jessica Biel. Shitty banger. So good. What's so that? a shitty banger, we actually talk about that with Bisco. That yeah, is a yeah, movie actually. that... It, yeah, where's that green ashtray? That's what I was looking for. That is a movie bum, that... Bitty, 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 I really bum, couldn't tell bum. you where it went. I'll so, tell you where it went, fellas. Right here. <laughs> so what a shitty banger is, is a movie that is... Uh, you, you're familiar with Rotten Tomatoes. Of course. Basically, they have the worst accuracy ever, but yes, I'm familiar. Basically, a hmm. movie that Instant has beef? anything from like a 10 <laughs> to a 40 on Rotten Tomatoes. So it's low in the score, but you personally enjoy it and you could sit there and watch it. And I think the 2003 Texas Chainsaw Massacre with Jessica Biel starring. Is oh, the remake. Those. Yes. Oh, yeah, they were terrific. Yeah, I thought it was they a good great, movie. But it didn't not, get not critically the, reviewed well, though. Not the one that they came out with, uh, what's the beautiful woman from Baywatch with the blue eyes? Um, Alexander Daddario. Yes, I didn't yeah. exactly care for that one too much, but uh, the Texas Chainsaw and the Texas Chainsaw Massacre at the beginning was really great. No, nah, the 2003 one's really, really good. I enjoyed them a lot. Yo, you're a horror... I didn't like the remake of the... You're a horror buff. There's like a real, like... I'll, do you ever do you ever see Rest Stop? I have seen Rest Stop. Rest Stop? Do you like Rest Stop? Rest Stop is a is a brutal film. Rest Stop is good. I want to see it just off the title because I know what it's about. Dude, I Rest can just Stop, hear it. Rest Stop is a good movie. Rest I don't, Stop is good. I honestly like. It's been so long since I've seen it. I can't even cohesively tell you. I've seen so many horror plot. movies in my day. It's it's actually sickening how many I've seen. I no. want to it sounded it, like a 1940s line. Seen so many in my yeah. day. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I'm method acting. Yeah. <laughs> uh, did you ever see that film? What was it? Joyride. No. Such a bad film, but it's just a cult classic. Um, one of my favorite um, movies uh, growing up watching it on the Sci-Fi channel, when Sci-Fi was Sci-Fi, mm -hmm. was Wrong Turn. I loved Wrong Turn. Just, just the fact of inbred cannibals in Appalachia. You know, you got think of how many people go missing in the Appalachian Mountains every year. You know, why do I, I, I think? I never saw that wrong turn. I watch actually, the first two or three, and then you, you could do without them. I actually think that 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 wrong turn movie. I had not seen it, but you said what, it's the about new inbred cannibals. Not the remake. No, the original. You, yeah. but I'm just talking the plot. You said it's about inbred cannibals in Appalachian Mountains. Yeah. I'm pretty sure there's a there's a real video on YouTube. It's called um, the Whitakers. Yeah, uh, about a family in yeah. West Virginia, and apparently, that movie, that inbred family, is based slightly off of based that. off of them because they are a legitimate inbred family who lives out in West Virginia. I, listen, I'm not going to say I believe in. Uh, I don't know what exactly I believe in when it comes to ghosts and things of that nature, but I Appalachian Mountains. Bigfoot. I mean, has it been disproven? <laughs> no limit. Has Good it. question. Um, uh, Appalachian Mountains. I don't even know how we got on the topic of Appalachian Mountains, but it's so interesting. I, I'm <laughs> actually really happy that we're talking about this right the now. Appalachian I, I Mountains, know about the Appalachian Trail and the Appalachian Mountains are so huge 
And there's people that live by them that'll tell you, don't go into those woods alone. You will hear things just keep going. Dude, it blows my mind the how Appalachian big America Mountains, is that we really don't think about it. Like it's mysterious. Yeah, it's those weird. Appalachian Mountains, I mean, so you don't know what's in them. Yeah. You know, one thing that always used to scare the shit out of me as a kid was a little thing called the Wendigo, mm -hmm. which the Appalachian Mountains are known for. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, just families in, in Appalachia. You go, thousands, of, not thousands, but hundreds of people go missing in Appalachia all the time. Really? People go in and hiking into those mountains, and sometimes it could be just from inexperience. You don't know. Mm -hmm. But at the Appalachia Mountains, and there's so many movies made about it that it makes you think a little bit. What the hell is in those mountains? That people you know, keep making movies and keep making folklore and keep making tales Do you about believe these. in the shit where, like, people, people like, actually like, go yell missing. your name and shit, and you got to keep walking? I don't know, because I haven't been there, but I'll tell you one thing. When one person says it and another person across the globe says it, and some people... Yes, some people can lie, of course, but so when many... When enough people say the same thing, there's going to be something there. You have to suspect there. something. Right. You can't exactly say yes or no, but you have to suspe suspect something. It'd be ignorant to say, oh, it doesn't exist, and you don't know that it doesn't exist. Anymore. Yeah, I agree with that. I Do hope... I want to go to Appalachian Mountains knowing all this? Yes. <laughs> Would you, like... Like, go? With about a group of people, yeah, I would still go. I would have something planned out, but I would go. Just like I want to go to the Blair Woods, uh, the Blair Witch Woods. I would love to. What if you, to. like, got, like, in the far off the Appalachian Mountains, it was all nukes? Like, just, they just had all these nukes. Have you ever heard about... That'd be crazy. <laughs> have you ever heard about Cl Clifton Road in New Jersey? Clifton Road, I have, and I've heard of Acto Road as well. That would actually be, if you ever wanted to, we could take a trip out there. Um, a special episode? A special episode, maybe a little vlog type deal. Yeah, no uh, we could go out. out there because supposedly there, the, the myth of Clifton Road is that if you go out to this certain road dark when it's dark out, you go leave a quarter in the middle of the road. Um, I forget, there's some other process that they say if you might have to say something, but, mm -hmm. but the gist is you leave the quarter in the middle of the road and supposedly a, a ghost of a kid who was killed on that road will pick the quarter up and bring it to you. Bullshit. Yeah, hey, now, see, I, I don't know about all now that. Now, listen, I want to go down there and see about it, though. I know Clinton Road is one of the most haunted roads in, in Pennsylvania. And I've ah, driven dude, that. I'm so wrong. I've driven that. I'm calling it Clifton Road, New Clinton Jersey. Road. It's Clinton Road, Pennsylvania. I've driven that You're road. right. Yeah, I've driven so, that. so you have done it. I've driven that oh. road. It is definitely not a very... I just said the wrong thing. I actually want to hear... Why. So I was actually with a group of people in this, and I think it was us just being a little scared ourselves. We were young. I had to pull... The road is long, and it, it's fucking dark, and it, it is foggy, and it is... Are there lights at all? Like, are there street lights? No. So there's, just, just, headlights? there's maybe a house every... Mm -hmm. And this well, is a true you're story. You're relying on your headlights. You're only seeing about a couple feet ahead. Yeah. Like, okay. This is a true High story. High beams on. High beams on. This is a true story. Um, so, it, it is... And it is misty. And you don't know where it's come, because there will not be any mess before you hit this road. And it is misty. And I, I, I said, fuck this. I'm turning around. So, I pulled into this driveway pull out and there's a red telephone booth and there's just somebody standing in the telephone booth. This is middle of the night. This has to be midnight, one o'clock in the morning. What the, if your house or not, what are you doing standing in your telephone booth? And until I pulled up my headlights, it was pitch black. So I go to put I'm my car in reverse. I'm going to put my car in reverse and my clutch is stuck. <laughs> my buddy Frank Monzo is hitting me no in the way. fucking arm. Let's fucking go. Frank Monzo was in the car with me. Oh, I'm going to right. put my car in reverse and this was an old Mercury C. It was a fucking thing's not moving. I'm losing my fucking mind. I finally got it in reverse. I look over. I shit you not. As I turned out to pull out of that road, I look back at that telephone booth. Motherfucker wasn't there. Motherfucker wasn't there. Shit. I don't know if he went back in his house. I don't know what happened. Motherfucker wasn't there. I swear, I had to do about 90 the whole rest of the way. Yeah. Until I got off of that road. You thought he was in your trunk. I don't know. what well, I was expecting <laughs> wow. Jeepers Creepers style fucking guy to come look through my windshield. I would have hit the brake and let him go flying. <laughs> Ba -boom, ba -boom. Is uh -huh. Jeepers Creepers West Craven? No, that wasn't West Craven. Uh, they actually have a new one coming out as well, too. West Craven was Scream, um, Nightmare on Elm Street, Last House on the Left, People Under the Stairs. People Under the Stairs is a good one. That's West Craven. Um, the Fog. That's all West Craven. Mm -hmm. Dude, we missed the... Uh... You said the word Hollywood two times, and that was a great transition for where I wanted to go next. But then both times you said it, we went in hard talking about something else. <laughs> I know. <laughs> but I do want to get into your recent trip out to L.A., out to Hollywood, because I would say, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was kind of like your big break. You were discovered. I wouldn't say my big break. You were but... discovered on TikTok, uh, kind of grew some stardom, got well yeah, over so a million views those, a few times. Those TikTok videos, are they like real videos? Are they scripted videos? 
None of them. They are real, real videos. They're all real videos. They're all real videos. Yeah. I yeah. thought so. I really did. Think I didn't so. even know I was on TikTok until this happened. Right. And, um, you know, there's a story behind all those videos. Oh, uh, you can tell. That's that's yeah. that's what is so good about it. Is that, like <laughs> that's what everybody clicks on the page to get the second video or something, and it's not there. Because there's no. You always leave yeah. them more. It's like it's just such a climax, and then nothing. Like it's one of like, the great ones. You call yourself a friend? That's the one that got me out to L.A. <laughs> That's the one, you slimy fuck. That's the one that got me out to L.A. And uh, Jeff contacted me. And that's Jeff Wittick, right? Yeah. I, I, did, I, I had never followed influencers and stuff like that before. Of course, I knew who David Dobrik was mm -hmm. and things like that. But he contacted me. We talked on the phone. He said, yeah, I want to get you out of here. I want you on my show. I'd like to talk about future things, that, which I'm not allowed to talk about what exactly we're going to be doing in the future. Just know we have big plans in the future. Cool. And uh, he says, I want to fly you out here. I said, great. How's next week sound? He said, how about I get you on a plane tomorrow? This was a couple of days before, or about a week before Halloween. I went, tomorrow? He said, yeah, I could get you on a flight from Philadelphia to LAX tomorrow night. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's I'm do in. it. Bro. I don't know who the fuck you are. I don't know what I'm getting into, but what the fuck do I got to lose? Exactly. Now, I what get are you there. feeling like going to the airport? Got to be adrenaline rushing. I or didn't just know, a I didn't know what, what I was just... Curiosity. I don't know what was going to happen. That's cool. So I get picked up in a Chevy Suburban. Him personally is in the car picking me up. He takes me to the, the Lowe's Hotel, the Lowe's Hollywood Hotel, right next to the Hollywood sign in the Hollywood Hills. He gives me, and I'll show you videos after the show, he gives me the top floor suite. I have a kitchen. I have a living room. I have a view of the hills and all of the sunset, not the Sunset Strip, but Hollywood Boulevard, right down the street from the Sunset Strip and Hollywood Boulevard, by the way. The clubs out there are amazing. And I'm just sitting there my first night. Huh? You know, I have somebody come and give me nice warm robes for when I get out of the shower. I'm like, what the fuck? Yeah. He gives me an American High Express card treatment. and says... This is the first time you've been on the West Coast? Yeah. He yeah. says, did you bring any money with you? I said, yeah, why? He goes, well, you don't need it here. He gives me an American Express card. I said, okay. I like these guys. That next morning, he has me picked up. Now that American Express card, you 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 can decline to say, but are you just swiping everything. On that <laughs> like, are you Jeff just like, knows already? Like, He's seen the like, statements. Like, no, 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 like yeah, exactly. Like you're like driving um, the street. Like I could go into Sunoco and get like a couple bags of chips. Well, they gave me a rental anything. car. Uh, no, they so I wasn't swiping it a lot. Diesel gas. He's in the like, <laughs> you going out? I'm like, yeah. He's like, you haven't been using your own money, have you? I went, yeah. He went, why the fuck you think I gave you the card? So that next night I went out to the club because I went out to a club every single night I was there. And the last night we all went out together. But ever since then, every time I went to the club, I felt like a king. Uh, cash or cut? Put it on the Amex. Here. <laughs> they start looking at you different. You want to Those cards are sturdy, too. Like, you know what they you're going to hit. Yeah, they're, 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 they're legit. No, I didn't do all that with it, but I did, uh, I did have some fun. Yeah. I did have a lot of fun. and um, Sounds actually, like everything funny. was first class. The last night, everything. The last night I was there, I, I fell in love with this one club particularly called the Sinister Club. I'm a horror nut. Yeah. This is like a very, look it up. It's, it's my kind of club. Yeah, we'll, check, we'll pop it up right here. I met this girl there. We're dancing. I can't, I can't disclose if I brought her back to my room or not. <laughs> a gentleman does a kiss and towel, Carmine. Just, had a, just <laughs> know I had a very intriguing evening that night. And um, I feel somebody, I was wearing this coat, actually. And I feel somebody <laughs> bump into me. Can't resist the leather. Lucky coat. I felt somebody bump into me. What the fuck? My phone's gone. <laughs> I got my phone pickpocket. Pickpocket, yep. Apparently in L.A., they, people go to clubs just to do that. I go your phone the, is in your jacket pocket. Inside You'd be of the, you can get your watch off before you even yep. know. These guys are good. I was dancing, too, and they got it off me. So I woke up to the bar. Wow. Well, at one of the bars. I said, hey, buddy, uh, I think my phone just got pit-pocketed. I've been tipping this guy 20s all night on top of every drink. Take care of him. Take care of me. He puts a double shot. He pulls out. It looked like what was absinthe. Pours it in there. Puts a sugar cube over it. Lights it on fire. Lets it go. Puts it in front of me and goes, welcome to L.A., buddy. I feel bad for you. Thanks. <laughs> next wow. morning. Next morning. I had a flight to catch that afternoon to go back home. It was the end of the week. I am fucking running around L.A., no phone, trying to find a Verizon store. And then I picked up this bad boy right here. So this is straight from Los Angeles, California, this phone. 
Now is that charged to the Amex mental. of Jeff Whittick? <laughs> no, that wasn't charged to the Amex. No. Dude, I cannot believe. But you want to hear that's something possible. funny? You want to hear something funny? So I had to make phone calls on the hotel phone. They charged me five dollars per phone call. You don't want to know what that phone call bill came out to. Yeah. They looked at it, said, "Should I just charge this to the room?" I went, "Yeah, charge that to the room." <laughs> <laughs> He was probably like, what the fuck is this guy calling people hey, on the man. hotel phone? <laughs> well, I tried to call him, and he wouldn't answer. Yeah. Because he didn't know the number. It's like, listen, Brody, every time you don't answer, that's five more dollars yeah, on the card. I, know, I should have left the message. As soon as that dial tone hits, it's five bucks. <laughs> Wow. But it was a great trip. His show was absolutely amazing. Right. Let's talk about that a little bit. You I were met, a guest on Jeff FM. I met some great guys. I met Sal Parker. Terrific guy. I met Shaban. Great guys. Good friends of his. And uh, Jeff, he's an East Coast guy like us, so he's just down to earth. You know, great, great guy. And uh, we talked about everything on that show. And, you know, they didn't treat me like a jerk. They treated me like one of them. And we went out and I filmed footage of them. We're actually climbing. We weren't supposed to do. I will say one thing. He is one of the influencers that doesn't bullshit what he does. Mm. He does not. We're, he has his barbershop brand coming out. Stuff is amazing, by the way. If you ever get the chance to buy Jeff's Barbershop, he's one of the best barbers on the West Coast. His products are amazing. We're putting up, uh, in that video, you see us on a billboard sign, putting up posters. I'm hanging off of a billboard, putting up posters. We did that. Yeah. We weren't supposed to do that. We snuck in a hotel, went up to the roof, climbed up, taped them on, and that security guard came down, we ran away from him. Free advertisement. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, the in and out right, Well, they called us. A, they, the one girl said, you fucking loser, because I taped it on the fucking menu as she was trying to order. <laughs> you fucking loser. I'm in a suit with a fucking thing of glue. <laughs> Walking by her. Now that's a character in a suit with a tub of glue. The glasses. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How's In-N-Out Burger? Is it good? Uh, I didn't try. Oh, okay. In-N-Out Burger's good. I've had California Pizza Kitchen is ass. No, Instant the- beefs. Well, wait. Do you know? And that They're everywhere. I know. Yeah. And that- I saw that you uh, that you posted that you were at California the Pizza Kitchen. The best food I had there. in L.A.? Street food. The best food I had in and all of And what'd you get off the street? And I was eating everywhere. Oh, the one, the hot dogs. <laughs> They're not normal <laughs> hot dogs. These fucking things. Chili, a little bit of onions, whatever the fucking, whatever these people do to these hot dogs. Then one night, I'm fucking stumbling home from this park called Jameson Park. Stumbling down, walking on fucking stars. How how many days in total was the trip? I was there for a week. Week, okay. And I seen this card open. I went, you guys open? Yeah, we're open. Give me a hamburger and everything. And I'm sitting at the desk, looking at the Hollywood Hills... On top in my suite, eating a fucking two dollar hamburger. Well, yes, yeah. <laughs> loving it. Best hamburger I ever had. The best. <laughs> fucking um, David Hasselhoff on the floor. There's <laughs> eating the burger that his, when his uh, daughter was filming him. No, uh, there was so many cool clubs and so many cool people that I met out there. Uh, I mainly met a lot of influencers out there, but even just the regular people, I was like, uh, "What's it like living out here full time?" Like, oh, you'd love it. I don't think I can live out there full time. You know, I'm just so? going to travel out there for a week. You're a city guy at heart. Well, it's, it's a big city. What about like New York? Would you it's like, not would, the East Coast. Would you move in New York? Not now, I wouldn't. No. 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 Not Why? Now. Uh, personal reasons I wouldn't move out there that I'd rather not say on the yeah. show. I don't want to piss people off. As hey, I, I hear say. you. Say that. Joey's Look at that. Anyway. Any future no limit guests. If there's anything you don't want to say on the podcast, <laughs> that's what you do. You don't say it. I Why? only ask one thing. You can keep this on camera. Hand me one of them pumps, because this pizza, <laughs> not going to say the name of where I just got the pizza from, is killing me. It wasn't a. It wasn't an L.A. hot dog. It was no, it wasn't. It was not. And it wasn't, it was not. Oh, and it wasn't California Pizza Kitchen. Those L.A. hot dogs will have you have an indigestion, but they're worth it. Now, oh. this has been a running joke between Ed and I about these tums on the Ooh, set. And now they, like a, they come in handy way more often than you probably would have thought. It is a Tums smoothies pack. I've never seen anyone have a flavor of Tums other than original. Maybe extra strength. (laughs) That's fucking no limit. Uh, Uh, Dude, I'm just a fucking wrecking ball tonight. Yeah, you definitely are. So after your time spent in L.A., you decided that this coast is the one for you. Yeah, I mean, listen, I'm 100%. I mean, me and him already have talks about going. I'm going to be going back out there very soon to work with him Yeah. again. And we have a friendship now that is very, very solidified. Me and him just clicked. But uh, Florida's more my speed. Mm, Florida? If is there I was, a big film industry in Florida that no, you can get into? No, if I'm in the big film industry, I could fly my ass out right. where I have to go. True, very true. If I was going to move to California, 
I would go full on Charlie Harper and get a beach house in Malibu. I'm the new Charlie Harper, baby. <laughs> <laughs> So. Minus the uh, HIV. Minus the HIV. <laughs> Stand. Yeah. <laughs> so, I feel like in LA though you'd be such a unique character out there. Like, oh, they never what did, anything what like did, Exactly. Right. What did those guys like? Who did you That's meet? And what did they see? And what did they see you the as when you first arrived? toward me out there. Not, I don't want to sound cocky or, or like sure. that can, in any way. You know, because I'm as humble as they come. You know, everybody in this business, we all get a little bit of an ego. I'll be yeah. the first to admit, I have a little bit of an ego. But it, it was different, thank you. They gravitated towards me out there. Uh, they never seen anything like me. It was it was weird. Even, you know, the non-celebrities, just people that I would meet while I was out at a restaurant or a bar, be like, where are you from? Yeah. Are you an actor? First, I would always get, are you an actor? Dude, like, they probably honestly really think that you're in some kind of, like, method, like, yeah, state. Yeah, I, I wore a suit almost every day. You know, have to be professional. I was right down the street. I was able to, I can't talk too much about that, but I was in Capitol Studios. And I got to see a lot of very nice things in Capitol Studio. But uh, everybody thought that I was an actor. And even when I met David Dobrik, you know, um, I was in his house. You know, I, I talked to him. I, I fell on his pool table, you know what I mean? Yeah. I threw him in his pool. Yeah. I threw David Dobrik in his own pool. I chased David Dobrik <laughs> around his house. And they filmed that for And they filmed it. I chased, I got to chase David Dobrik around his house. Is that out there on the saber. internet? Or? Yeah, it, some of it might be, yeah. but I Dude, mean, some of the stuff you, that... So you chased David Whoa. Dobrik around remember. his house with a pink lightsaber. Oh, down his driveway, his outside his driveway, around his Tesla, up his stairs, Carmine. into his pool. You ran... By his pool, and you didn't slip and break your fucking leg and catch the <laughs> craziest lawsuit ever. No. Oh my god, I would have fucking broken had, my dude. Neck he on. had bigger things on his mind. You catch a lawsuit, they're not your fucking friend anymore. I would have more important. my kneecap on the, on the side. You of know, the, I don't know. So you got to remember some stuff that gets edited. You don't get to see everything that we do that sure, gets edited, sure. right? And we did some crazy shit. That's you funny. Know? That's cool. One of his friends, I, you would know him when you seen him in the video, but I forget his name. Came down the stairs and a pink princess skirt with a blue lightsaber because we went there to paintball David Dobrik like he always paintball I said if I get hit with a fucking paintball gun it's going to be bad yeah. and Jeff's saying I'll make sure I, I don't let him hit you I said if I get hit with a paintball it's going to be bad <laughs> and then I was getting once we pulled up I then it my attitude they just changed let to it, off. it changed to I'm not going to get hit with a paintball gun right <laughs> it's not going to happen right like he's like I don't know I'm like what do you mean you don't know it's like I can't guarantee anything, you know? <laughs> My, the one guy, I'm not going to say his name just for uh, job purposes, but I had mentioned him earlier. Um, we're driving one of Jeff's truck, guzzling bottles of wine. Every five minutes, stopping at a lick. What are you doing? And I love driving with him. What are you doing? I don't get another bottle of wine. You want some? Pour it in a plastic cup. What the fuck? I, I, they're like us. These people are just like us. Yeah. I loved it, but... They, the, uh, we just had a, such a good time. The Nelk Boys. Um, John Nelk Boys. I wish I could remember half the names of these people. I mean, we spent a whole hour just hitting a punch of bags so you could get the highest score in one guy's house. He had a Ferrari and a Lamborghini and a Rolls Royce truck in his driveway with fucking guns in the drive. You know, it was just, it was awesome. We had a great time. That's so cool. Trying to think of what else. Uh, Jeff's dog is amazing. That's Jeff's no house is beautiful, though. by the way, right in the hills. This dog's amazing. And, uh, you know, they treated me like one of them. You won't want to live in the Hollywood Hills? He said if I lived there, I'd be with one. Of, I'd be in his crew if I lived out there. Yeah, way. exactly. I yeah. would be with him almost every day. You'd hang out and but do I'm contact gonna, gonna, just like you were doing. I'm going to uproot my entire life. I mean, yes, don't get yeah, me I wrong. That could change my life even more than that, like, than it is now. But I can't uproot my entire life on a maybe. Yeah. Sure. But you got some other things going for you. Oh, I have a... I'm very... Very fortunate to be able to make a living in this business and do what I have and in you this have, business. Like, and this is only projects. the beginning. Yeah, you have multiple projects coming up. Like, there's there's stuff coming up. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like you you're said, waiting, you, right? You're not waiting to do no, work. No, I'm not right? waiting around for work. Right. Exactly. You kind of downplayed a little bit, but I think over the last few months, definitely in the last year, has been your breakthrough. Well, I, I like to stay humble. I like to uh, just let it come. Let it come in stride and uh, never get too cocky. Because this, what's that? One of my favorite Star Wars lines. Uh, be careful you don't choke on your aspirations. Mm -hmm. You know, no. don't choke on, you know, your, your own pride. For sure. And uh, I was, you know, here I'm like the singer, the actor. Out there, I'm a fucking nobody. Yeah. You know, I'm a nobody. I'm starting fresh out there on the West Coast. So it was like, it was a good humbling experience as well. But they all love me. 
That I can't yeah. say. They're like, who the fuck is this kid? We love this kid. It, it was fun. And yeah, you're definitely different. And sure. you have stayed very humble about it, you know? Mm, Other, like obviously, so. obviously here on the podcast. He's the reason I started Chindam Podcast. Yeah, he gave you that He gave you that kind of idea. Yeah. Which is coming back, by the way. Yes, yeah, it is coming yeah. back this week. COVID. Sure. COVID's getting everybody. Yeah. Exactly. Gets everyone. COVID bug. It was so, yeah. who's coming up on... Um, Chin Down podcast that you're excited for? Um, so we have a lot of special guests lined up. Federico Castelluccio from The Sopranos will be there. Peach Mango Juice will be on our show. Uh, we have a lot of... Hopefully, Sonny Canto will be on our show. I've been saying talks with him, so hopefully we That'd can get cool. him on our show. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that would be cool. Hopefully, get Johnny Glover We'd love to have Sonny Canto on our show, too. So if you're Shout watching, we'll, we'll have you on our show. So uh, we have a lot of good things in the works. And we, uh, we're taking it back to formula, so you guys are going to be very, very happy with what we have to offer. Yeah. Sweet. One thing that we talked about with Bisco that we bigged up on your show is that, unlike any other podcast, it's very much like a late-night talk show. That's where exactly you're the host. Right. When we started this, I wanted it to be very jo- Johnny Carson-esque. I wanted to have the Johnny Carson vibe with that modern feel. And I think we, we got a little off track with where we were going with it, but now we're, we're solidified in what we're going to do. We have a plan, and we're going to shoot for it. Mm. And that's that's about it. Yeah. It's about the prep on it. Not so, sure. as far as just overall, everything will be wrapping up here soon. Anything that you want the No Limit audience, the audience watching this right now, to know that you've got coming up? Um, no, not yet. Stay nothing tuned. Yet. Well, we talked about the movie. Yeah, not for nothing. Not for uh, nothing. Definitely, definitely look out coming for soon. Not for nothing. Directed by Frank Tagliere and Tim Dowling. Uh, definitely look out for Street of Dreams, directed by Alex Biscardi, um, and a couple other things that I can't talk and, about. And right where now. are some places? Honestly, this is a great thing for the audience to hear. Some places where they can hear you sing. Um, yeah. Honestly, I'm all over the place. I'm at Johnny's Cafe in Margate a lot in the winter time. Um, do you do bookings and stuff like? Just I do parties? do bookings uh, for parties, but I like to do shows more mm-hmm. than I would do parties. Uh, I do do weddings as well, but like I said, I'm more of a showman than a guy that's just background music. Mm-hmm. But if you would like to hire me, uh, my email, my phone number, or any one of my social medias, my Instagram's Carmine Yusko One, Facebook Carmine Yusko. It's not too hard. And if you would like to hire him, for God's sakes, get a couple fucking French horns, dude. <laughs> Give my man the French horn. <laughs> no, they're, Free they're charge. expensive. They're expensive. <laughs> Right. If you want the full Carmine experience, you're going to get the French horns. We're going to get a band. Pretty soon, French, your, yeah. your stardom's rising, bro. Pretty soon, you ain't going to take nothing without a French horn. Yeah. Pretty soon, I'm not going to work with anything but a band. Yeah. Uh, I'm v- getting French very horns. close to getting rid of the tracks. Mm. The tracks, uh, I, I wanted to get rid of the tracks last year and the year before that, but unfortunately, with this whole COVID-19 thing happening, mm-hmm. certain precautions had to be made, so I couldn't exactly go straight into just working with the band. But I've worked with the band more often than not. Thankfully, um, recently. So, but I hopefully within the next year, hopefully cut out the track completely and just work with a band. That's yeah. awesome. So it's been great talking to you, Carmine. It's been great. It we was heard great to be on the show. We heard your few things that you got coming up. Do you have one quote? Because you've been talking about these famous movie quotes, uh, these forties quotes. One quote you want to leave the No Limit Nation with? My yeah. favorite quote of all time, and it might sound a little selfish, and I said this on the Jeff FM show. It's from a little movie called Heat. Robert De Niro tells Al Pacino, never let yourself get attached to anything you're not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds or less when you feel the heat coming around the corner. Mm. I'll leave you with that one. Never let yourself get attached to something that you're not willing to walk out on in 30 seconds or less when you feel the heat coming around the corner. Correct. All right. And we'll leave Mm. you with that. No elimination. That's been it. Thank you, Mr. Carmine Yusko, for providing us a great performance today, as you always do. That's been it. Episode 60 of the No Podcast. 60. Peace. Love you.